recording. And we're good to go, Lori. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, for you, those of you that were not a couple minutes ago, I apologize ahead of time. My voice has been a little in and out this late the day. Uh, welcome to SUNY National Distance Learning Week webinar series. Uh, if we can just take a moment and everyone let us know where you're tuning in from in the chat. And then also just a friendly reminder to mute your mics when you're not speaking during the presentation to avoid any feedback. So does anyone want to introduce themselves? <laughs> Everybody's shy today. <clears throat> Well, that's okay. You know, if you want to take a moment when, when we're speaking or when, the, when Robin and uh, everybody are speaking, just put a message in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, National Distance Learning Week is celebrated annually to generate greater, <laughs> greater awareness and appreciation for distance learning while recognizing leaders and best practices in the field. We aim to showcase the expertise of professionals engaged in the day-to-day -day practice of distance learning. Uh, as I said, my name is Lori Palmer. Um, I have a little bit of background. I work for Open SUNY Support Services. And on behalf of the Open SUNY team, I'd like to welcome you to this showcase webinar as part of the National Distance Learning Week. And we do have, um, hi, Catherine in the, in the chat there. Um, today we are pleased to host Robin Sullivan from the State University at Buffalo. And Sherry, I apologize if I'm going to say your last name wrong, Sherry Van Putin from Binghamton University, who will be sharing about the Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success MOOC. And then Robin is an online learning librarian with the UB Libraries. She has been recognized through a SUNY Faculty Advisory Council on Teaching and Technology. That's the FACT II Excellence in Instructional Support. And she's also the recipient of three Open SUNY Effective Practice Awards. And she earned the SUNY Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Professional Service. Sherry is an instructional designer for the Center for Learning and Teaching at Binghamton. She holds a master's degree in adult education from Penn State University. She served as co-pi co on both the Tools of Engagement Project, On-Demand Discovery Learning Professional Development, and the MTech MOOC. That's the Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success. And then I see that Aaron put a link to the MOOC here. Um, Sherry is also the recipient of two SUNY Faculty Advisory Council on Teaching and Technology Excellence and Instructional Support Awards, and two Open SUNY Effective Practice Awards. So on behalf of the Open SUNY team, thank you for joining us today and sharing what you know. Robin and Sherry, you want to take it from here? Sure. Thank you very much, Lori. <clears throat> um, so today we will talk a little bit about the Exploring Emerging Technologies Project. And um, Cherie and I are happy to answer your questions here during the session or to um, you know, follow up with us afterwards. Our contact information will be in the final slides. So next slide, please. Um, thank you, um, Aaron, for putting the URL into the chat. This is very important um, if you want to follow up with the project afterwards. It's a very short URL, just suny.edu slash emtech. And the project is targeted to learners of all types. The um, main target audience is higher education students, faculty, and staff. And it is also very appropriate for anyone in today's society who wants to keep current with the rapidly changing technologies. We all know that something that is available today could easily change, be improved, go away by tomorrow. So it, to be a lifelong learner in today's society, you need to be able to um, transfer your learning from one technology to another and find different learning tools and resources to meet your particular needs at any particular time. Next slide. The project is in two different parts. Um, it has a long name, so for short, we call it EM Tech MOOC, and that is also the hashtag. So if you do a search in some of the social media tools for M Tech MOOC, you will find some of the um, comments from people that have uh, participated. A bunch of the participants have shared some of the digital badges that they've earned and some of the artifacts that they've created. But basically the two parts to the project, one part is a Coursera-based MOOC, 
MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Course. And the course is Discovery Learning. Main idea is to be able to explore and reflect on the innovative and creative uses of emerging technologies. The MOOC is also our supportive learning opportunity. Um, we have a discussion forum that is where participants will share the work that they're doing throughout the course. And myself, other mentors, other facilitators in the course, other participants then use the discussion forums to provide additional resources, additional uh, encouragement and ideas for participants to explore further. Next, please. So the MOOC is separated into five different modules. And the very first module talks about lifelong learning and it's important to being a, a positive member of the 21st century. And the other modules cover the four C's of 21st century skills. These skills have been identified through ISTE and also the National Education Association as the most important skills that are necessary for today's employers. So those skills are communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. So the five different modules, they can be completed in about an hour for each module. So you can um, you know, take an hour for each week, or you can cram the entire five modules into a binge learning session and get it accomplished in a single day. And if your learning um, is something that you want to extend and do some deep exploration, you can extend it out and make the um, deadlines within those modules meet your needs. So if you wanted to complete a module each month or you needed to complete a couple activities and get back to it at a later time, it's all very flexible. The next slide, please. Okay, this is a picture of the Coursera screen and I'm going to let Cherie take over and uh, give you a walkthrough of the MOOC and the other part of the project. For a second there, I thought Robin was just going to keep going. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, this would be once, this is actually week two of the MOOC, just, just so you know where we're starting from here. And this week would be communication and collaboration. And you would start out with a reading which basically just situates you into what you'll be talking about that particular week and then we have videos and they're there we keep them short and um, then there'll be some reading maybe some optional um, activities that they could do but then there would be a discussion prompt where they would learn about the, the big activity for the week and actually that would be creating or or searching mtech wiki which is the other part of the MOOC and finding a particular um, tool or resource to use to um, communicate and collaborate better with others. And then they would create an artifact and put that in their ePortfolio and then discuss it with um, other members of the, of the MOOC. And then um, there would be a quiz at the end, but this quiz basically just makes sure you've done everything in order to complete that particular module. And if you want to move to the next slide. And then this would be the MTech Wiki. So from the MOOC, you would go to the Wiki and then the Wiki has, Robin, how many resources are there now? About 300? Actually, I think we're getting uh, about 370. Okay. The last count. Okay, so, so there's a lot of resources in there and they're organized according to what particular um, unit you would be in. And this can also be used like as a standalone resource as well. So here we are in the wiki and you can see along the, the middle of the section in the, the blue area, there's lifelong learning, communication and collaboration, creativity and critical thinking. And those go along with the um, first four modules of the MOOC. And then you have on the left-hand side, the apply filter section. So say you were working on something for week three creativity, you would click on creativity and then you would come over here to the apply filters. You would choose an objective. I guess I should really use week two communication and collaboration because then they give you some things there, communicate with others, create a professional identity, enhance collaboration. And you would add that in your filter section. And then you would choose a category and the category 
would be um, based on the type of tools or resources. So we have audio, there's um, gamification, uh, mobile apps, so, so you have a lot of choices there. And then you would search, and then on your right hand, you would have a um, list of those particular items come up. And then from there, you would explore what comes up and then choose which one you would want to do your activity on. If you want to go to the next slide. And over here, um, this is actually a crowdsourced um, wiki. So we would encourage people to contribute to it. And even if you end up not doing the MOOC and you want to explore the wiki, we would encourage you to go ahead and modify a tool if there was a change in something or add a tool as well. And there, you can see we have guidelines and instructions on how to go about doing that. Um, and don't worry about messing anything up because Robin or I would be like a moderator. So before your change actually went live, we would get a notice and we would check it to make sure that it, it is in fact something we should change. Okay, next slide. And I don't know if I take over, if I let Robin take over, or if I should continue to go. I can take over from here, Okay. Sharif. Okay. And I'm just going to um, post the URL into the chat. So um, actually, Caroline, the um, main URL, suny.edu slash emtech, that takes you to our project website. And the wiki is linked right from that site. So it's under the Discover menu. And the MOOC is also, if you're interested to enroll into the MOOC in Coursera, you can also enroll right through that main URL. So it's kind of a one-stop shop and it'll get you where you want to go. Thanks for the question. Um, so the learning process throughout EM Tech is first you would read and participate with the course materials. Um, then in the discovery exercises, those are provided through the discussion forum in the MOOC. And that then points you back to the wiki, so back to the website to select a tool or a resource that meets one of your objectives or meets your needs. You would then play around and explore the tool or the resource and hopefully create an artifact. Um, many times an artifact is not able to be created. For example, if you are going to explore TED Talks, you might be watching some videos and you're not necessarily creating something of your own. In that case, your artifact would still be the TED Talk video um, you, during the MOOC activity, you develop an ePortfolio. We provide either an option to create a digication portfolio. There is an, a SUNY instance of digication that's available that anybody can get a free account. And you're also able to create a portfolio using any other type of portfolio tool. The wiki has a big selection of alternate options, whether you choose to use LinkedIn, uh, creating a Wix website, um, another portfolio platform, PowerPoint, whatever you want to create your portfolio in, that's your choice. So for each discovery activity, you create an artifact and you put that artifact into a page in your ePortfolio and then add a short reflection. What did you learn through your discovery? Um, was there anything surprising? Is this tool going to meet your needs? And anything else that might be relevant? You do that for each of the four modules. And then in the <clears throat> um, each module, you're able to earn a digital badge. If you get through the entire MOOC, you can earn a mastery badge and also a Coursera certificate. The very fifth module is reserved for a uh, portfolio peer review process. So in the MOOC, um, you are assigned to review two other people's portfolios. And after two people review your portfolio, you are then considered a completer of the course and you would earn your digital badge and also a Coursera certificate. So the Coursera certificates are available anybody relating to, related to SUNY in any way. Uh, students, faculty, staff, even alumni are able to earn a Coursera SUNY certificate. Those are very valuable in the job field, searching for future um, employment activities or promotion or graduate school. 
um, everybody in the course, whether you're affiliated with SUNY or not, is able to earn a mastery badge. If you're not affiliated with SUNY, then there is a charge of $29 if you wish to get the Coursera certificate. Um, your mastery badge can also be printed as a certificate. So why do you want to bother with this process? What are the rewards for you? Um, at the end, everybody has a personal portfolio that you can com continue to build upon. So as you continue your learning and discovery throughout your life, you can make that portfolio as much as you'd like it to be. You would be able to earn the digital badges, the Coursera certificates, and we hope the most valuable piece is just the intrinsic rewards of being a lifelong learner. Next slide, please. So we wanted to talk just a little bit about what was the inspiration to this project. And it has a long history. So back in about 96, there was a project called 23 Things. It was developed for staff professional development. A library in North Carolina wanted to encourage their staff members to become more technology engaged. And so that was kind of the in inspiration for our project. Um, they licensed that under Creative Commons. We adopted it and transformed it in 2010. I had used it as a course assignment when I taught in the Library Information Studies Department at UB. The graduate students really loved the autonomy and the ability to learn at their own pace. Presented that at SUNY CIT and faculty there said, oh, this would be great for faculty professional development. And that was the very first round of the SUNY IITG projects. We applied for one of those grants. And in 2012, TOPE had emerged. That was available as SUNY-wide professional development for about five years. And back in 2017, we decided to redesign and relaunch the project based on everything that we had learned, things that we wanted to change and improve. And so we launched EM Tech in March of 2018. Um, next slide, please. So since that time, uh, it's only been about a year and a half, we, are, we have um, participants from over 150 different countries, um, a total of visitors um, that are, have been at the project are 4,685 and uh, 111 completers. And I would like to say Lori, who is our moderator for this session, is also one of the completers. Thank you, Lori. Um, so it was really fun to talk with um, people throughout the world. I think that's one of the real great learning opportunities for participants is to talk with people from different parts of the world and find out that things are very similar and also there are some things that might be slightly different depending on where in the world somebody is coming from. Next slide. We wanted to share a little bit of statistics with you. Um, we do a post survey each time somebody completes the MOOC. And these two questions here, I wanted to highlight the ability for the project to enhance the use of emerging technologies for both professional and academic purposes we have 75% of the participants who say either quite a bit or very much. As far as has this project positively influenced your feelings about using technologies, um, either your comfort level, motivation, fears, or concerns, 66% also say that uh, quite a bit or very much. And that's a big part of the reason why we're trying to put this project out there just to get the idea that you can learn how to use technology tools and no matter what level you're at, you can become more um, familiar with what's out there. Next slide. So the um, Tools of Engagement project that um, we have done a lot of research on, we've had some graduate students who have helped with some qualitative research. We've gone through the summary posts from all of the participants and these couple themes have emerged. So one of the themes is that um, people that talked in their summary posts that they have immediate use of the technology tools or definite plans to use them or to implement the tools. Another th research theme that we found is that there is an expressed desire to continue to learn. 
So people are continually going back to the wiki as a resource. It can be accessed without going through the MOOC. And we do see that the Google Analytics kind of supports that, that people are making a lot of use of these tools. So whenever you have a need to create something, go to that wiki, pull down your objectives and pull down the type of tools that you're interested in learning or just use the search field. And it's a great resource right on its own. Probably the biggest theme, the most um, popular theme that came out is that the ability to learn is enhanced by the learning through the experience of others. So as somebody makes a post and um, another participant looks at what they've done, they, that's when conversation happens where people are learning from each other. And you might not have explored it the first time, but if somebody else says, oh, that was really nice. I like how you did that. That might be a cue for somebody else to go back and take a second look. Next slide, please. So we wanted to um, let you know about some of the um, quotes that college students are saying regarding their participation. And I might have had these two slides out of order. Lori, can you go to the next slide real quick? I just want to double check if I have. Okay, I might have removed that slide. That's the one I'm looking for. Perfect. Um, so we have a couple faculty right now, a couple that I know of, who are using the MOOC as part of required activities for their courses. Right now we have a faculty member, Christine Tenez, who is in our communication department in, here at UB, and she is using it for the Communication Literacy 2 course. This course fills the SUNY Gen Ed requirements for information literacy. She has five different sections going through the course. Uh, one of those is an online cohort. Some of them are face-to-face. -face. And she has required her students last semester to do um, just the communication module. Um, and then this semester, she has them doing both the lifelong learning and the communication collaboration modules. The students are um, very active in the MOOC and a couple of them have voluntarily gone and finished the entire MOOC so that they can earn their mastery badge and their Coursera certificate. Another faculty that we have in the MOOC right now is Dr. Kathleen Gradle. Many of you are familiar with Kathy. She is a very renowned faculty from SUNY Fredonia. She has a couple sections of her literature and technology course going through the full MOOC as part of their course requirements. And she is, you know, she's teaching pre-service teachers. So they are um, hopefully going to gear up. We actually encourage anybody who completes the MOOC to become a mentor. So Lori, I'm gonna actually put a plug into you if you wanna come back in and mentor <laughs> some of the future participants, we would love to have you. Um, so these pre-service teachers who are in the MOOC right now, they're doing a great job encouraging each other to learn further. Um, and so there's a great partnership between the communication students and the Fredonia students. Next slide, please. So we wanted to share just a few of the comments that the students have been saying. And um, so one student said that they enjoy reading the posts from their um, fellow students and they like looking at the examples of their e-portfolios. Um, they value the wiki and the ability to search and how it's organized and just being able to try out different tools that they may not have had an exposure to. Um, another student, oops, actually there's two more I want to talk about if you can go back. Um, another student said that they enjoy the interaction between the course mates and their instructors and also that they um, discovered um, a tool that they had researched, but it was also something that someone else had researched. And finally, um, another student said that the exercises allowed them to put into action what they learned. And that's another thing that we hope that this is something that encourages you to do some hands-on exploration. Next slide. So we just wanted to reiterate the URL for the course. And we encourage everybody on the call and all of the listeners on the call in the future to just go to the uh, suny.edu slash mtech website and consider exploring one of the technologies and one of the discovery exercises. There's some exercises that are right on the website too. So I think that's our one more slide is uh, gonna 
allow us a few minutes. So actually, um, this slide has a bunch of links, and I will um, uh, you can find these linked from the SUNY uh, website, the MTEC website. If you wish to share this announcement, we actually hope you would share this announcement with your colleagues. Um, there are flyers on the site, some small takeaways, a video trailer, um, all kinds of information to share among your campus and to students, faculty, friends, staff, whoever. So I think that's now our last slide. We have a couple minutes for questions and um, Cherie and I are definitely available to stick around for a couple minutes if anybody has any additional questions. Um, I hope that somebody comes up with one or two questions for us. Well, I don't know about a question, but I will add, thank you for the shout out. Um, I did complete this, the MOOC last year, and it, it really was a great experience. And I've actually bookmarked the wiki um, from then, and I do go back and refer to it every once in a while. I just finished my master's degree in June, and more than once I went back to try to find some type of tool that I needed to, to complete a task. And I didn't want to just do the same old, same old, and it really helped me to, you know, learn something new and learn about all the different options that were out there. But I really appreciated the discussion amongst everybody. We would have like, uh, like weekly discussions amongst ourselves about the different tasks. And I think that was, I mean, the wiki was great, but I think learning from my fellow, you know, fellows was, was just fantastic. Well, thank you, Lori, very much. We loved having you. And uh, it's great to hear that you continue to make use of the, the wiki resources. And remember to add to the wiki resources as yes. well. Definitely, it's still growing and um, we still, you know, there's billions and billions of tools out there. And so, you know, being able to rate the tools is something else that the wiki allows. So the better tools kind of raise to the top. So when you're trying to figure out what's the tool out there that's gonna help me do what I'm trying to do, you can go to the wiki, sort by popularity or sort by the most rated and you'll be able to find something that will help you. Susan, I really do hope you can encourage some of your faculty to participate. Um, if you would like any assistance um, with that, certainly reach out to Cherie and myself and we can help you do that. What campus are you from? Um, I believe she's SUNY Broome. Okay, great. Great, thank you. So she's right down the road from me. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, hopefully you will be close to CIT, which is coming up uh, in not too long, but it's kind of looks like to be a midpoint between Cherie and my location. So we're definitely planning to be there. So hopefully if you get there, we can meet up in person. That would be great. Yes. Very cool. Um, John, it was great to see you on the call. Um, we had a couple Johns actually. Um, I see some uh, familiar faces or names. Anybody else have a question or an idea on how they might implement it with the folks that they're working with? So we are at um, the time. So I don't want to keep you longer than we said. Um, but Caroline had a question about oh, forced completion of MOOCs. Um, and the completion rate is not yeah. very good for MOOCs in general. But the one thing you have to remember is people a lot of times will come in and out of MOOCs and they'll use them for what they need. And then they might not complete the whole thing. They'll just get the pieces that they want out of it. So more people get mileage out of MOOCs than what you see when you look at the completion rates. Yeah, so our completion rate, I'm not sure exactly what that is. We have 100 completers. And, um, you know, I think it's about a little bit more than 2,000 who have um, been really active participants. So whatever, that's a pretty low number. But, um, you know, Coursera has shared, Caroline, if you want to connect with me, they've shared some uh, data regarding completion for all of the, um, I think the Coursera might be the SUNY MOOCs or the, the, their full, I asked them for our completion responses to the survey and they sent me a big long list. So um, I can share that with you. Oh, great. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for your- Yeah, thank you, everybody. Wonderful. So thank you very much, Robin and Cherie, for sharing with us today. 
Uh, today's session was recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. You can access all of our webinar recordings and resources at the URL on this slide, and I will also share that here. Unless Aaron did you just beat me to it. <laughs> uh, additional activities are happening around the globe for National Distance Learning Week, so we hope we'll take a look at the U.S. Distance Learning Association's lineup. Other than that, we appreciate your participation today, and hope to see you at another event. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. All right, I've stopped the recording. Whoops.